Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of the Normal Faith Podcast. I'm your host, Terrence Jones, and I'm so glad that you're uh, joining me on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to, first of all, apologize for uh, the very uh, late arrival of this content. Over the last several weeks, uh, I've been busy at work a little bit more than usual. And so I have not been able to be as consistent in getting uh, these these episodes out as much as I would like. And those of you who follow me online in terms of reading my blog, you would realize that um, it's been a, been a little bit since I've been able to at least complete the series, The Danger of Being Right. But hopefully things have settled down quite a bit. So now we're back on track that uh, I'll be able to at least be getting, uh, getting some of these uh podcast out a little bit more frequently and hopefully uh, we'll be able to be on schedule um, over the next couple of weeks at least that that things will be have some consistency and uh, you'll be able to get uh, some of this teaching that I'm that I'm working on as I was going over my my blog and some of these podcasts uh, just to review some of the things that I've been doing I realized that I've spent quite a, a bit of time talking about prayer and when I really started the, the podcast and really started focusing on the blog, it happened just before and at the time that uh, COVID changed all of our lives. And for those of you who live here stateside, not only did we have to deal with that, but we also had the issue of so many different protests happening, uh, dealing with racial inequality and injustices. And so, you know, it was it was a very difficult time, uh, not just for you know people in the community, people in the world particularly, but all of us, we were, were going through that time. And for those of us who are Christians, I think it was a it was a time of confusion, but also a time for reflection and introspection. And how do we handle all of this stuff that's happening, how does our faith interact with this? And for me, it became a, a very personal journey, something that caused me to do a lot of meditation, to think, to process, and and prayer was really at the forefront of that for me. And so I think maybe because of the times that I was going through, I tended to focus a lot of my teaching on on prayer because I think all of us were were at that point of trying to figure out uh, how does God want us to react in this time? How does God want us to deal with these things that are happening? And of course, we looked at the word. Of course, we went to the word and, and we tried to seek sustenance and encouragement from that. But ultimately, knowing how God wants you to respond day to day to events that are happening in real time, happening in your community or on your job or in your home, that that sort of personal um, uh, revelation is something that, that comes from our time of prayer. Right. Uh, that time of of getting alone with God and talking to him and waiting on his Holy Spirit to interact with you and reveal to you the things that you would have to do. And so I think for me, prayer became something that was very important, and I'm sure uh, for many of you as well. And and uh, I want to talk about prayer again after saying all of that. I want to talk about prayer again uh, today for this for this particular podcast and hopefully use it as a little bit of encouragement, because I know that even though all that we went through, uh, we're still we're still having to deal with a lot of issues. We're still having to deal with a lot of issues in our communities, on our jobs, uh, because the world is different right now. We're facing so many different challenges, and this this remains a time of constantly uh, needing to be in tune with God and His Holy Spirit. And so I wanted to encourage you to continue your prayers, and I wanted to, to talk about trusting in the prayer process, trusting in the prayer process. Now, we don't always think about prayer in terms of a process. We just think about it as something that we do. But I, I wanna I wanna share some thoughts uh, from a teaching that, that Jesus shared with his disciples and 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 those around him during the Sermon on the Mount, and hopefully use that as an example to help us uh, continue to pursue our our prayer life and to be to be um, committed to it because it will bring solutions in our lives. And so I want to focus today on the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. And we'll be looking at a few verses there when Jesus talks about prayer. I'm going to be reading out of the, the New International Version. And the Word of God tells us this. Jesus, he, he's speaking and he says in verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who, re who asks receives, 
and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So Jesus uh, uses these these illustrations about about prayer. That is what he is talking about in this, in in these in these two verses. And he he uses these actions, the actions of asking, the actions of seeking, the actions of knocking, to illustrate how how prayer works. Now it's 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 very simple. Uh, he doesn't go into a lot of detail. He just basically states some very positive things about prayer. Everything in these two verses is positive. It is almost as if Jesus is assuming that every time you pray, it is going to have results and it's going to have positive results. Because if he says, if you ask, you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be given to you. If you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, it will be open. And it would have been one thing if he just said that once, but then he repeats it again in verse eight. He says, for everyone who asks, receives. You see this, this, the, the, the effectiveness of prayer is not limited to a particular group. It's not limited to a particular church. There is no one person or, or no one denomination that has a handle on prayer that they could do things nobody else can do. If everyone approaches prayer in the way that Jesus, um, uh, recommends in the way that Jesus dictates, right? Then you are going to see the benefits of it in your life. Jesus says this is something that brings about effective results in your life if you pray. So he says here, uh, let's let's just kind of break these verses apart so that we can we can sort of understand and, and get a good uh, overall image of what is happening here. Ask and it will be given to you. Uh, that's it. You can't you can you can't get any simpler than that. Ask and it will be given. This is just a straightforward. Make a petition. Say something. Lord, here's what I need, and it will be given to you. Okay, the next one is seeking. And so seeking is a little bit different than than asking. All right. Seeking implies like there is a there's a journey. There is something that you have to investigate. There's something that you have to figure out. It is something that's going to happen over a period of time. You have to seek. You're going to have to look for for this. So it's going to take some effort from you. But if you if you commit to it, then then you're going to find. All right. And then it says in the next verse, knock and the door will be open to you. So now knocking is a lot different than asking and it is certainly different than seeking. So when you when you knock, that imagery of somebody coming up to a door and they're knocking, that's the imagery here. The idea of knocking is you don't knock on a door just for the, for the fun of it. Well, unless you're pulling a prank on someone, but you knock on a door, okay, because you want to get into something. There is an obstacle before you. There's a barrier before you. That is the door. I mean, there's something happening on the other side and you want to get into that, whether it's a house or a room. And what do you do? You knock so that you can be let into what is happening on the other side. Now, some people have looked at these and they have said that, well, because, because they're so, they're so simple, they're so basic. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's very brief in what he says. Uh, ask, seek, knock. That sometimes people look at these and say, well, Jesus is just using a, it's like an, uh, uh, a literary device. Well, it's not literary, but more of a, of an oral device when you speak, right? He's going to say the same thing, but he's going to, uh, repeat it in, in three different ways so that, so that the hearers can, can understand it through, through that, that creativity, if we might say that repetition, he's saying the same thing in different ways. And hopefully that will reinforce the truth in the minds of the hearers. Okay. Now, now there is something to be said for that, that these, these things can be seen as, as, as praying, um, right across the board. They all relate to praying, asking, seeking, and knocking. All right. But, but the definitions are too different. Okay. These things, these actions of asking and seeking and knocking, they, they are clearly um, different. They clearly imply different actions, different responsibilities from the, from the person who is involved. And so it, it is not that these things are just uh, three ways of saying the same thing. These are three ways that we pray. Okay, these are three different types of prayers that we can go through. Not every prayer is an asking prayer. Not every prayer is a seeking prayer and certainly not every prayer is a knocking prayer. Okay. Prayers take on different, uh, actions in our life because they are, they are producing 
we want different results. So sometimes we will ask, but then other times we need to seek. And then there are other times when we need to be knocking. So there is the idea that these things relate to prayer, but they're relating to different ways that you can pray to produce certain results in your life. But I want to take this a step further, and I want us to see these not just as different ways of praying, but that they can all be connected and that they can relate to a process of prayer is like a progression that we can go through to bring about the results that we need in our life because Jesus is portraying prayer in these verses as something that is effective. Jesus does not assume in any way that prayer is, that prayer is not going to work. Okay, he, he, he comes across as prayer is effective. Do it. Ask, you'll receive. Seek, you'll find not, and it will be open. And then he repeats it again. Everyone who does this, you're going to see these results. So Jesus is saying that prayer works. Prayer works. The progression of this comes in, though, uh, because we have all experiences in our life that there are times when we, we, we pray, but we believe that we are not seeing the result. Anybody can, can testify to that. Anybody can, can raise their hand to that. Yeah, you know, there are times I've prayed and, and I've not seen the results that, that I was asking for. Okay, so let's take this scenario. Uh, there's a situation that comes up in your life and, and you can't handle it. You, you, have to, you have to deal with it through prayer. You're really seeking God's intervention. Okay, so it's, it's a weighty problem, issue, something that's going on in your life. And, and, and you pray. You, you ask God, God, could you please help me deal with this situation? Whatever, whatever it is. Uh, Lord, could you provide this particular thing? Or could you allow this particular person to be there so that the, this problem can be dealt with? So you ask. And you ask, but you don't get an answer. So, so what happens? Do you just walk away? Sometimes a lot of Christians do, or they just keep asking, right? They just keep asking for the same thing. But Jesus, or, or as you pray, God, God has says, God has said no. And Jesus now brings us now to this next aspect of prayer, which takes your prayer to the next level, because you need prayer in your life in order for, 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 for your, you need prayer in your spiritual life in order for it to be effective, Right. So what do you do? You ask God to help you with a particular situation. You pray. You don't get uh, the answer. So, so what do you what do you do? Do you just stop praying? Do you just walk away? Or do you keep praying for the same thing that God has already said no to? No. What you do is that you now take your prayer from the asking prayer. You now take it to the seeking prayer. This is the progression, right? This is the process. Because even if God says no to you. When God says no, it does not make the problem go away, does it? The problem is still there, so what are you going to do? Are you just going to sit around and just, just, just wait for the problem to just ruin your life? God has already said no, but you're going to just keep asking for the same thing? No, now you take your prayer to the next level, and that is to the seeking level now. So now if God said no, you still have the problem, well, then you need to now figure out, well, what is the solution? If the solution that I thought was right is not what God wants, then what is it that God wants? You must now pursue a seeking prayer. You must now start seeking to what is going to be the right answer. And you have to do this because you must now learn. You must now learn a different way of doing things. The reason why you asked for what you asked for was because that, that is all you knew. You did not know any better. You just looked at the situation and in your mind, the only solution that you know is this one thing. So in order for you now to be able to think differently, for you now to be more creative, for you now to be more diverse in understanding the solutions that could meet your your particular situation you now have to learn and that's what the seeking will do the seeking prayer now takes you on this journey of of growth 
Now you start seeking the mind of God. God, what did I miss? What did I not understand about my situation? What is it that I am not seeing because I I don't have the right frame of mind because I may be a little bit too involved on this particular end? Lord, help me to understand what is it that I am not that I'm, I'm not I'm not seeing in my scenario. And it is when you start seeking now, all right, that that you are going to start to grow. That you're going to start to to see more in your life. There's more than one solution to this problem. But that takes a journey. You have to go on that that quest, a quest almost for spiritual growth. So now you you go through this process now of you're asking and, and now you're seeking. But what happens now when you find the situation? When you realize what it is, well, you know what? Here is what I missed. Well, now you have to engage in the knocking prayer. And the knocking types of prayer now is that, Lord, now that I realize what is it that I miss, I didn't understand. Father, help me now to get into that. Help me to get into that way of thinking. Help me to get into that way of living so that I can now deal with these situations, though I can now handle the situation so that I can now see uh, the, the, the answers that you want me to see. That's the knocking prayer. Because now that you realize, okay, I wasn't in the right space. I wasn't in the right place to understand. Now I do. Now, Lord, position me. That's a knocking prayer. Position me now to be able to, to get through this particular situation that I'm in. And that could be like praying, Lord, could you could you let me be in the right place? Let me be in the right place at the right time, talking to the right person. That's That's a knocking prayer right there. Okay, and that is, you know, Lord, let me in to what it is that's going on. So we can see prayer as the asking, the seeking and the knocking as a, as a process. It is a process that we can go through that, that makes all our prayers effective. Think about this. It's like if every time you prayed, okay, you went on the, whenever God said uh, no, or you felt your prayers weren't being effective, you actually took the time to find out why, and you wanted to determine, well, well, what is the right solution here? And then you pursued that. Well, then every time you pray, you would have said, man, my prayer life is always effective because I always go, you always go through this process. Whenever there is something in your life that you're praying, you don't see the results, then you start pursuing the way that God would have you to think then your prayer life is always going to be effective. And I think that is what Jesus was trying to communicate here. That is why Jesus speaks so positively about prayer. Because once you can commit to prayer in these in these particular uh, methods, then you are always going to see these, these types of results. And Jesus says, everyone who does it, right? As long as you can commit to the process, then you're going to see those results. So that's why told you the very beginning, I get, I, you got to trust the process, trust the process of prayer, trust in the prayer process. Now notice what Jesus says. He wants to reinforce, okay, why this, this, this praying, this type of praying is going to work. And it is based on uh, the, the person who asks, obviously, but also the person to whom he's talking to, and that is God. All right. So, sorry, the person to who the, the person whose brain is talking to, and that is God. So in verse nine, he says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you were evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? All right, it seems pretty clear. So Jesus uses this this illustration of the parent-child relationship, and not a parent-child relationship in terms of you know authoritarian and discipline and order, but he is talking about in terms of loving provision and protection for for children. So so he incorporates the the listeners, right? Which of you? He brings them in. Start thinking about this from just a, a normal perspective. If you have a child and the child wants bread, are you gonna are you gonna give him a stone? You're going to pull a prank on your own child when your child is asking for something to eat. You're going to give him a stone. You're going to trick him. You're going to deceive him. Of course not. You're not going to do that. Or if he asks for a fish, you're going to give him a snake. If he asks for fish, he wants something to eat. Okay. And this has to do with both the bread and both the fish have to do with sustenance, have to do with these things that are necessary for their growth, necessary for their existence. God is not going to pull a prank and deceive you and give you something that you don't really need, something that's, that's going to be harmful to you. He's not going to give you a stone. You bite on it, break out your teeth, snap your jaw off. 
And he's not going to give you a snake either, something to bite you and poison you, kill you. That's not how God works. God does not use our our, our prayers as a way to, to get one over on us or to make fools of us or to embarrass us or to humiliate us in any way. God sees prayer as an opportunity for him to express his, his, his very generous love with us. This idea of giving good gifts, those are beneficial gifts. That God's generosity is beneficial. God has a beneficial generosity. The things that he provides for us are always going to be very good for us. And so Jesus says here, no, which of you, if your son asks for bread or if he asks for a fish? In both of these situations, the son knows what he needs to ask his father for. The son knows that he needs bread. The son knows that he needs a fish. What Jesus is showing here is that you you can find the answer. You can find the answer and communicate that to God. Prayer, God, God is going to reveal the things that you need to know. When you pray, prayer, prayer helps you know what you need to to know and when you can be armed with that with that with that knowledge then your your interactions and your relationship with god is going to be one that 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 is is going to have that grounding because because it is going to be it's going to be that 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 knowledge that secures you that grounds you and so you interact with god based on that knowledge you know here is what i need here is how it's going to fit into my situation so you're dealing with god not just in a spiritual emotional way but in a very intelligent way as well too and that stabilizes us that that grounds our spiritual life now he says this here you know about about giving good gifts he says if you who are evil if you know how to do give good gifts to your children, and the idea of being evil here has nothing to do with you being a you know a bad guy, uh, you know nefarious, uh, you trying to take over the trying to take over the world like some supervillain, okay? But the idea of evil here has to do with somebody who is flawed, or somebody who is limited, somebody who does not always do the right thing. Somebody who is who is not always in a situation where where they where they can be trusted, and that's all of us. All of us are flawed. Okay, there there is there is no human being that has it all figured out and does the right thing all the time. And there is no parent, at least I have never met a parent who 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 will say, "I have done everything relating to my children in the right way all the time. I have always done what is best for them." There's no parent who will ever say that. But even in appearance imperfection, okay, the, the the ultimate goal is still, oh, I just want my I just want the best for my children. Even though you don't always make the right deci- decisions, you're still always wanting what is best for them. Isn't that isn't that true? Okay, so if you as a flawed human being could want that and you still try your best, even though sometimes you fail. Nonetheless, you still try your best. You're always moving ahead, wanting what's best for your child. You succeed more times than you fail, but but nonetheless, you're still trying, always trying for what's their best. How much more do you think God is going to be committed to you having your best, to you being your best, to you doing your best? That's God. That's God. And so Jesus is saying, having these things in mind about, you know, about, about God's love for us, God's commitment to us, and, and, you know, and God's, God's way of blessing us and working in our lives, then it is okay to trust. It's okay to trust in this prayer process. This, this, this works. Prayer works. And if you can commit to it, if you can commit to the process, then you are going to see the results. And so I want to encourage you as you face this week coming up, as you might be going through particular situations or scenarios in your life, uh, and, and you are trying to find that path, you're trying to find a way, trust the prayer process. Prayer is going to bring the results. It, it might not happen if you ask, okay? But, but then you've got to take it to the next level and start seeking. And when you are sincere about seeking the truth, God is going to reveal that. And once you have that truth, 
then you take your prayer to the next level knock lord now that i know this lord help me to apply it in the right way help me get this thing into my life in a way that is going to be meaningful is in a way that is going to bring about the fulfillment of your will for me trust the prayer process i'm terence jones and this has been the normal faith podcast